Hello there, I am Dr. Deeksha Pandey and you are watching Eurogynecology for Beginners. Before we start today's video, I have one question, one basic fundamental question for you. How a person can become a good surgeon? How the surgical outcomes become unmatched, unparalleled? There are a lot of factors which lead to a good surgical outcome, your anesthetic team, your own team, your own assistant, the sisters who are assisting you, good positioning and lot of factors. But if you are learning surgery, the basic thing to become a good surgeon you must know is the anatomy. Very, very fundamental and very, very important to minimize complication and improve your outcomes. Now, how do you learn this anatomy? Do you learn it in OT table? No, you cannot explore too much while you are operating on a patient. Do you learn it from a book? You can, but to a very limited extent. Then there are atlases, videos, models with which you can learn anatomy. But one important way, one very good way to learn anatomy is dissecting a cadaver. And not many people do this kind of learning these days. But I encourage all of you to go to the dissection hall at least a few times if you really want to make the concepts of your anatomy good. Anatomy is something which does not change much. All other things are variable. So we should always start from there. Today, I'll take you to our dissection hall to teach you, to try to teach you the urogynecological anatomy which is important for us during our cases in OT. The presacral space. This is the space which lies in front of the sacral promontory or the upper segments of sacral bone. The most important or most evident relationship is the sigmoid colon here which lies on the left side. On the right side, important relationship is of the ureter. You can see the ureter here which is entirely crossed by the gonadal vessels or ovarian vessels which become the part of infundible or pelvic ligament. You can see here the ureter entering the bladder. Posterior to the ureter lie the external iliac vessels. The structure of importance in this presacral space for us is the anterior longitudinal ligament which lies in front of the sacrum here. It is above the periosteum going like a band from top to bottom or bottom to top. This dissection will show you the obturator space from the pelvic side. The forceps is pointing here to the obturator canal where the obturator vessels and nerves enter. That is at the posterior superior aspect of the obturator muscle which you can see here. This is the obturator internus muscle and this is the fascia which covers and forms the white line at its insertion. Moving on to the retropubic space. In its lateral relationship is the scary external iliac artery continuing as the femoral artery below the inguinal ligament. You can see the inguinal ligament here. It goes medially and gets converted to the lacunar ligament. Lacunar ligament has an important relationship which is the inferior epigastric artery. You can see it here. So that also becomes important for us when we are working in the retropubic space. The lateral relationship can be traced from this obliterated umbilical artery as the medial umbilical ligament in the peritoneum entirely. 
if we move laterally from this lacunar ligament, the next ligament in continuity is the pectineal ligament. While working on the space, we have to remember that the inferior border of this pectineal ligament is very close to the obturator vessels as well as nerves. So we have to keep on working in the upper part and spare the lower part because that is the dangerous area. White line is the space in the middle of the pelvis. What you are seeing here is the obturator internus muscle with its fascia. Can you see the fascia which is covering the obturator internus muscle? Lower down it is forming the white line as a condensation and from this condensation the white line arises the levator ani muscle. Can you see the muscle here? arising from the right line. This is the levator ani muscle forming the roof of the pelvic floor. Fascia has been removed here so that you can see the exposed obturator internus and the line of the fascia goes down. This fascia in turn starts from the iliacus muscle to form the fascia of the obturator internus and then thickens to form the white line which reaches up to the ischial spine and from ischial spine starts the sacrospinous ligament. In this space pyriformis muscle lies superior and posterior to the sacrospinous ligament. Sympathetic chain with its ganglions lies medially as is the rectum. With deeper dissection, you can feel or even see the ischial spine here. We call it the nodal point of the pelvis as it lies in midway in the pelvic wall. The thick structure which you see here is the pudental nerve. The two trunks joining together to form the pudental nerve here. This pudental nerve lies posteriorly to the sacrospinous ligament which is in turn the upper border of coccygeus muscle. Have a look again. Ischial spine. Medial to it is the coccygeus muscle and the upper border of coccygeus muscle is the sacrospinous ligament and tear to it is white line. If I tilt this pelvis a bit, you will be able to appreciate the levator ni muscle much better. So arising from the white line, you can see below the obturator internus muscle is the levator ni, which forms a bowl shaped or basin shaped structure in the pelvis. The most interesting part is understanding this anatomy from the perineal aspect. So you can see the vulva and the inside of it. So we'll start dissecting it layer by layer. So first is the skin, then comes the fascia as we dissect deeper. Here we have started entering the superficial perineal pouch which is just beneath this fascia. And do you remember, it is made up of three muscles on either side. You can see the muscles here. This muscle fibers which you are seeing here are the ischiocavenosis muscle fibers. When you come towards the lower aspect, you will find the superficial transverse perineal muscle. In between the skeuocavenosis and bulbospongiosis, deeper if you go, making the roof of this superficial perineal pouch is the perineal membrane. And to make it easy, we have painted the three muscles. 
Red here is the schiochevinosis, green is the bulbous spongiosis, and the blue colored muscle is the superficial transverse perineae. Again, see the relationship with the anal canal. This is the sentinel tag which was present in this lady. And now we are going upwards to the vulva where you can see the skin, the subcutaneous tissue and then comes the superficial perineal pouch with its content which are basically three muscles making a triangle on each side. If you go deeper, you will be able to appreciate the roof of this superficial perineal pouch which is formed by the perineal membrane. Now you have to identify the muscles. Tell me which is the one which we are painting red. Which muscle is this? Correct. This is the ischiocavenosis muscle. Muscle which is being painted green. Yes, the bulbospongiosis muscle. And now the muscle which is being painted here with blue color. Tell me what is it? Correct. It is the superficial transverse perineal muscle. And deeper structure to this is the perineal membrane. And whenever working on the perineum, never forget about the dense network of vessels and nerves which is near the clitoral end. And before ending this, I would like to thank Soumya Ji sir, professor in our anatomy department and tell him that we all love him. <laughs>